Okay, so we've created our paths, we've sampled colors, we've used selected colors, and now what we're going to do is merge our paths that we want merged. So I'm going to, I'm going to select my paths. Um, how do you select multiple paths? You use your selection tool and you hold down your shift button. So I'm selecting these paths. And now what I want to do is make them into one path. Actually, I'm going to make everything into one path. I want to make everything into one path. And the way you do that is in what's called sort of like this. Um, if it's not there, window, workspace, reset essentials. That's, that's embarrassing. Go to window, pathfinder. This is a, a major palette. You always want to know about pathfinder. Uh, before we do that, our Layers palette, right? That's a major palette. That's we do a lot of work. We need to know what's going on in our layers. We see our layers. That's something we're using a lot. This palette right here, right? And in fact, you might want to click and drag it out. Um, Pathfinder is another palette that you're going to be using a lot. And you could just click and drag them out. And now what I want to do is use the unite shape mode. And notice what happens. Uh. Everything becomes one path. Let's look up here again. Look at my layers. Can we see my layers right here? When I hit unite, what happens to my layers? They become one um, uh, group if you don't have everything touching. Um, but it creates the same fill and stroke for the whole thing, which makes it even more iconographic. And what I'd like you to do is choose either black with no stroke or white with black stroke. And let's make our stroke a little bit uh, heavier here. Go to maybe three point. Um, you know what? Let me just let me just show you something. So here's the other way to present your merged image, either all black or white with a black stroke. Okay. Um, when you have this, you might notice that there's, we have this style up. You might notice that there's sort of weird uh, points coming off um, the edges or the corners, the anchor points of your path. You can um, define how your stroke looks. Um, here in the stroke palette. Um, let me tell you how I just opened this up. Uh, sorry, people. I have a tendency to just sort of always close things up. So here, what I want to do is change these uh, corners so they're not so pointy, maybe. Or maybe I want to change how my stroke looks. Right over here, there's this um, palette button called stroke. It opens up and doesn't give you much. It just gives you that um, weight, right? But if you just click right here, see where my mouse pointer is, people? Mm. This gives me the show options button, and it makes it bigger or smaller. And this is what I'm interested in. All these um, options here. Uh, remember how I said, oh, I don't like these pointy corners? I can change that right here with the corner type. So now I click that middle one, and see how this is, maybe zoom in a little and show you the difference. See how, um, it. Um, here we have pointy corners, here we have rounded corners, here we have mitered corners or beveled corners. Um, and also notice how I can have my stroke align in different ways to my path. The path has no 
display properties until you tell it how to display. Do you want a fill? Do you want a stroke? How do you want to have your fill defined? How do you want your stroke defined? Well, we defined how to make a fill a couple different ways, right? By sampling, by choosing swatches. Here, we can define how our stroke is created in a couple different ways. So I said we could change our corner style. We could change the alignment, which means here we have this blue line, which is our path. And the stroke could be outside of that, uh, centered on it, or in the middle. And that really changes how things look, especially when we're talking about um, and it's really worth knowing about stroke alignment. Look how this changes my, my building, right? So here I have it like this. Isn't that interesting looking? It's very different looking than, say, um, this, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, this corner with this alignment, right? You see how that's sort of put together? Um, you're going to find that as you change these options, it changes the visual um, nature of your illustration. Save this. File. Save as. I'm going to call this um, strokes. Uh, actually, Pathfinder. And the last, so that's three versions, right? We have our sampled color, our fill color, our pathfinder and stroke version. The fourth version that we're going to make of this is the clipped mask version. And what I want to do is, this actually looks pretty cool too, right? Isn't that interesting to sort of see now this um, very iconic image sort of placed on the um, photographic background? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place another image here. Do I have anything else we have? There's a puppy. There we are. Not a puppy, that's close enough. Um, so I'm going to take these little guys and have them uh, maybe fill up this space in here. Let's see that will work. Okay, so here I have um, this layer here. I want it to be behind my house or my building or whatever. And now what I'm going to do is select both my path and that image. And I'm going to go to Object, um, Clipping Mask, Make, and what well, didn't work at all, did it? Give me one second here. I know why. Um, there we go. So now I have um, this building that's just occupied by a picture. That little error I had, that first little mess up, I mean, honestly, it's good to see me mess up, right? Because you need to know how to recover when you mess up. You're going to mess up. That's fine. The question is, how do you get to where you want to go? So what happened to me a second ago was I um, noticed that my um, pathfinder uh, uh, paths are actually um, two. I could actually separate this. It didn't. I didn't have enough overlaps. If you have this sort of situation, what you need to do is create what's called a compound path. So once you have a compound path, this is no longer a bunch of different paths sort of linked together in a group. It's one essential path, essentially one path that you can then do things like make a clipping mask out of. So that's it. Sampled fill, selected fill, pathfinder, sort of iconization, I, I think of that, and then clipping mask once you've sort of merged up. Any questions? Okay. I'll, I'll come around and help.